Welcome to PLM TV News. Now behind me, you see a Toyota dealership. And only a year ago, a Toyota product was similar to quality, lean production, and technology leadership. But the sticky accelerators changed all that. The tough implications for the company has, of course, escaped no one. But today, it also raises the questions around the roles of PLM and simulation. So let's meet a couple of people from the analyst and PLM industry who knows a lot about these topics. Could or should a PLM system have prevented the Toyota problem here? Well, probably not, and uh, not completely. I think that PLM could have probably reduced the impact of the incident. That is, PLM could have, should have been used to minimize the effect by discovering the issue sooner, providing better context for analysis and remedial action sooner rather than later, minimizing the impact of the, the recall. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the challenges companies facing is that PLM tools have evolved much faster the ability of the organization to adopt them. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at processes than the human element more so than the technology side of the business. It sort of boils down to an individual problem on, for instance, the simulation side here. Yeah, very, very much so. The challenge for Toyota and similar organization in similar incidents and situation is really effective simulation of all the possible failures that could happen. Mm -hmm. And with reduced budget, pressure on time to market, competitive pressures on the one hand, and then the increased complexity of vehicles, it's simply very, very difficult to simulate problems and systems completely. Toyota has, though, a very strong reputation on the manufacturing side, and quality is really the, the sort of label you want to put on what they're doing. Is that banner stained now? It's certainly, this image will be tarnished. Whether it's real or perceived, it will be tarnished. Mainly an individual problem, says Joe Barkaya. But what about the PLM developers? We talked to a couple of them, Jim Heppelman from PTC, a company that supplies Toyota with PLM software on the powertrain side. Clearly, technology like uh, reliability, failure modes effect analysis, backed up with analysis, you know, uh, CAE type analysis and, and, and PLM managing that all and making sure that this data is visible, it might have helped. I, I wouldn't be so, uh, so bold as to say, you know, if, if Toyota was using all of PTC's technology, this couldn't have happened. But I, I certainly think that it's likely Toyota will invest in such technology on a go-forward basis to try to reduce even further the chances it'll happen going forward. Can our industry learn something? Yeah, I think we can, we can weave this into our value proposition for PLM. You know, sometimes we talk about right the first time, you know, and it's hard to put a value on right the first time. But you can sure see what happens when it's not right the first time. You can see what happens when a throttle linkage sticks, or you can see uh, at Airbus what happens when a cable harness isn't quite long enough. I mean, mm -hmm. these things are devastating to a business. So I think the lesson here is to continue to be more articulate about the technology, its process benefit, and the business value of achieving that process benefit. More simulation? Simulation can help you detect whether or not such a problem is likely to happen. But the first thing you have to know is which problems to simulate for. And Helmut Ludwig, the president of Siemens PLM, agrees with Jim Heppelman. He says that no systems are perfect. I think PLM has an enormous possibility to create a transparency and to create the possibility to verify in a virtual space all the possible negative implications that a design error has. Um, can a system completely avoid any mistakes of human mistakes? I, wouldn't, I would say no, because there are no perfect systems.